Hi, I'm Tony Nichols, and welcome to Chamber Chat. Hi, I'm Tony Nichols and welcome to Chamber Chat, a program put together by the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce to keep you informed of what's going on in your community and in your chamber. Joining us now in Chamber Chat is, I, I don't know how you've not already been on the show, Jeff Merritt, founder of Operation We Care. Welcome to the program, Jeff. Well, good morning. Thank you. You're, you're absolutely welcome. And I, I think I must have to, uh, have to throw in there, Diana Merritt probably is a co-founder. So. The driving force, yes. So, so you get yes. to go home and be safe now. Yes, thank you. For the six people in Wicomico County and the surrounding areas that don't know what Operation We Care is, tell us what it is. Uh, well, we're a nonprofit organization that started in 2007. Uh, our original mission uh, was to ship care packages to the troops deployed around the world. Uh, that continues to be our mission, but we've uh, expanded our uh, reach a little bit to include uh, law enforcement and fire department uh, personnel in, in the surrounding area. You know, there, there's so many organizations throughout the United States that, that help veterans mm -hmm. um, and people that are deployed. How did this thought come about? How did, how did this arrive? It's, it's certainly a noble effort that me and many other people have supported and will continue to support, but how, how did this come about? Did you just wake up one day and want to do this? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Um, that, that's pretty much actually how it happened. Uh, we, we looked around and realized that there wasn't a largely organized effort in, in this part of the Eastern Shore to do this type of work. Uh, there were small, smaller you know, church efforts, uh, veteran service organizations. They'd pack a you know, few care packages here and there. So we just started. It was literally a handful of people. Uh, we had no money. Uh, we had an idea, and we just rolled with it. So the, the $64,000 question that you always ask someone, you always get asked, I'm sure, why? We, we want to show our support for the men and women that protect us all around the world, not just in the hot zones. Uh, we've got troops deployed everywhere around the world. All the embassies have uh, marine detachments at all of our embassies everywhere and they're away from their friends and family for extended periods of time. And we want to let them know that we haven't forgotten about them, we care about them, and we want them to come home safe. Well, you probably just answered the, the next question that I was going to ask. Um, with, with so many worthy organizations or uh, so many worthy opportunities to support national causes, local causes, why the military? We just want to show our support for the military. I mean, these men and women, they lay their, their life on the line for us. And I think we owe that to them to return the favor by showing how much we appreciate their efforts. Now, you, you, you spoke uh, just a few minutes ago in that little overview of Operation We Care. You talked about the men and, men and women deployed around the world, but you also talked about some stuff here locally you do. You, it's not just people that are in... Afghanistan or, mm -hmm. or wherever they may be, it's people right here. How do you support um, folks locally? Well, we um, recently, the, for example, the fire departments, we recently donated back in December uh, 400 smoke detectors to the Salisbury Fire Department. Okay. Uh, that was a combined effort with uh, us, First Alert, smoke detectors, and Lowe's up on North Salisbury Boulevard. Uh, we got our heads together and made that happen. Uh, more recently, we donated 50 smoke detectors to the Pittsville Fire Department, okay. a smaller organization. They still have the same need for fire prevention. Uh, law enforcement, uh, we, we provide uh, funds for uh, canine vests. Uh, we're in the process of actually working towards raising funds to purchase a canine dog for the Wicomico Sheriff's Office mm -hmm. uh, in memory of a young lady who recently passed away as a result of a heroin overdose. So okay. we're kind of knee-deep in that project, and it's ongoing. We've had a lot of success. Um, National Thank a Police Officer Day, we 
feed all the police stations, police officers for a 24 hour shift on that day wow. in September and January, National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, the same thing. We, we feed all the police officers, all five stations in Wicomico County over 24 hours. That's fantastic. And so it's, it, a lot of what we do is partnerships. Uh, we can't get what we get done done by ourselves. Sure. But there, there has to be a massive, to, 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 to think about feeding all the law enforcement agencies for a 24-hour period. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a pretty big undertaking. There has to be a yes. massive volunteer base that's plugged into Operation We Care. We do. Uh, we have a, a huge um, energetic volunteer base. And I use energetic that... Um, some of our volunteers are very hard to hold back. Um, right. they, they really want to, uh, we like them to pr remember their priorities that while we're very passionate about what we do, everybody still has a life to live. Right. And um, we, we try and put people in the places that they're good at. You know, if somebody's good at decorating things, we have them help with the box decorations for the care packages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got 30 schools involved in that right now. Uh, decorating the packages to be shipped in our next shipment. Mm -hmm. So you, you talk about the, the packages and, and shipping these boxes. I've been fortunate enough and privileged enough to attend one of these or some of these packing parties. Why don't you give the viewers a, a sneak peek at what a packing party looks like? <laughs> I, I call it organized chaos. <laughs> there you go. Um, we have about 300 people, uh, mostly um, military family members mm -hmm. and uh, prior care package recipients uh, like to come out and give back. Mm -hmm. um, and well, we've been going 10 years, so we have a lot of repeat uh, volunteers mm -hmm. that are very enthusiastic and they like doing certain jobs. And everybody just joins in, it works together. Um, it, it's it's an assembly line situation where you start at one end and you go to the other end and you fill your box along the way and then at the end you tighten it up with little items and then it's taped and addressed and sent off. Yeah. Uh, the boxes have no weight limit. Uh, it's a flat rate so obviously we try and get them as full as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, what we call a quality control area at the end where we can put small items in to tighten the box up and you know take up the airspace. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite the uh, operation to, to use a pun, you. pun there. Um, so I'm watching um, from home right now, and I want to know how I can help. How, how do people get in touch with Operation We Care to, to find out how they can help? Um, we have a website, operationwecare.org, and we're on Facebook. We, we post a lot of pictures on Facebook of things we do. Um, our packing events are unfortunately not open to the public because if we open them to the public, yeah. I don't know that we'd, we'd probably fill the Civic Center. True. Um, I agree. So we, we have limited space uh, for what we do. And uh, uh, so we don't really need help packing boxes. We need help collecting donate, mm -hmm. uh, the items to mm -hmm. fill the boxes. The list of those uh, items we need is on the website and the Facebook page. Uh, funds, uh, we spent $32,600 in postage last year. Uh, to ship all of our care packages. So uh, funds are always helpful to, yeah. to help make that happen. And uh, decorating the boxes, uh, we have the kids decorate the insides of the boxes with these colored panels of paper mm -hmm. that we provide. And so it's a great project for schools and church and youth groups, uh, groups like that, that uh, you know want a little project for the kids to do and just kind of let their creativity. We provide the materials, they provide the creativity. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, we can see from the pictures that's quite the event. Yes. So uh, I just want to thank you again for joining us here on Chamber Chat and helping get the word out about Operation We Care. Well, thank you so much. We'd like to give you the opportunity now to take a look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Chamber Chad right here on Pack 14 and joining us now is the newly minted 
President and CEO of the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce, Bill Chambers. Bill, welcome to the area, program, chamber, all the above. Tony, thanks. Thrilled to be here. Um, and now you're, you're on chamber chat right out of the gate. I know. So I, I think it's uh, pretty awesome. So you need to know right out of the gate with this particular chamber chat because recently I have had the privilege to talk to all of your staff and ask them similar questions. But this is not about what you're going to do for the chamber. This is not about your vision. This is an interrogation about you. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so, so let's start with, I, we don't have to start with I was born. Uh, but but get, who is Bill Chambers? Um, I'm first a family man. I've got a beautiful wife, um, four children, ranging in age from 21 to 33. Okay. Uh, no grandchildren yet. Um, one's married, but the other's still seeking true love. Mm -hmm. uh, and my wife and I just uh, bought a home here in Wicomico County, which we love uh, in Hebron. Yeah. Um, this is a great place. We'd visited here. Uh, we have relatives that are in Worcester County. So we've been Eastern Shore people as visitors for probably three decades. Right. Uh, and it feels wonderful to be here. Everyone's been welcoming and friendly. We love the environment. Uh, I love uh, working in downtown Salisbury. Mm -hmm. I love seeing what the mayor and the county executive are doing, their vision for the region. Yeah. Um, this is a great time to be a resident of Wicomico County. I've used the, the phrase in different settings many times now, right time, right place. It is uh, it's a great place to be right now, especially, especially downtown. I get the, the privilege of, of working downtown as well. So, you do. So let's go on to Colleges, education, degrees, all those kinds of things. Well, uh, as is the case with many college graduates, what I studied in school did Has not translate to, to what I ended up doing in life. <laughs> I, got, uh, I got degrees in sociology and criminology and had, as a young person, teenager and in college, had the uh, interest to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was a military guy and had military roots in my family. Uh, as well as public service routes. So that was my intent. Um, and graduate, upon graduation, I uh, decided that uh, I needed a full-time job and started running an ice arena uh, in suburban Washington, okay. D.C. So I uh, did that. Uh, always had golf in my blood, so I managed a golf course at the same time as I was managing the ice arena. Uh, and then the late 80s, um, opportunity uh, was presented to get involved in the construction of a 6,500 seat sports arena right. located at uh, an equestrian center in Prince George's County. Again, no experience in public assembly management, but um, was selected to lead it, was involved in design, uh, the engineering, and then the ultimate you know, capital construction of the arena, which turned out to be a real boon for the economy of Prince George's County, even though at that time they still had the old Capitol Center, uh -huh. which yeah. hosted the, 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 the Bullets and the Wizards and the Caps. Um, but the facility hosted 200 events a year. We had NCAA tournaments. We had hockey. Hopefully we'll see uh, the Civic Center here yeah. when we'll get hockey. Yeah. Um, and uh, lots, of, lots of concerts, A-list you know, a, a concerts, tons of trade shows. It was a very busy place, generated... 30 to 40 million dollars in local economic impact. So I did that until I retired in 2011. Um, ser I was serving on a lot of different volunteer boards in Calvert County at the time and was president of the local arts council. So uh, we had an untimely departure of art director there. So I served as president of the arts council for three and a half years um, and then thought I was going to retire again and the Calvert Chamber reached out. So I uh, served as the president CEO of the Calvert Chamber for a little over two years expecting that would be my last foray in career. Um, saw this opportunity here, and a friend with the Maryland Chamber said, you know, the CEO job at Salisbury is open. You should look into it. And at the time, my wife and I had been looking at a second home here on the Eastern Shore anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I did find one, um, but things didn't work out in the fall. I applied for the job. Um, blessed to be here. I was selected. I'm excited. Um, this is a great opportunity, as I said. I think the time and the place for this region to blossom into a real economic powerhouse sure. for Maryland is now. Yeah. And I think we have the right people in place, and I'm not talking about me, right people in place in terms of leadership mm -hmm. here in this region Agreed. and our governor to really see this region uh, explode. So uh, I'm privileged to just be a little teeny weeny part of uh, hopefully what well, that is. So, so you don't get to respond to this next statement, but for the next 15 years as your president and CEO, um, 
we look forward to what you're going to do and how you're going to plug in for those 15 years until you retire finally. 15 years, uh, okay. This, All you right. don't, you <laughs> don't get a response. You, you've touched on a lot of different stuff that you've done in the community, a lot of different organizations. Do anything, do any particular interests uh, in community involvement stand out to you as you know, I'm, you know, careful how you answer this because yeah, no. you, you, you've got a lot of things that you'll be plugged in. Is, but there's, is there something that stands out to you that you're pretty passionate about? Education. Education, okay. Uh, I served as an uh, elected member of the Calvert County Board of Education mm -hmm. for a term. It was board president and vice president during that time. Uh, education, to, for me, is the key to a growing economy. Similar with Calvert County, I believe the number one economic driver in Wicomico County is our public education system. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have the beautiful Salisbury University. Warwick is a great and, and important cog mm -hmm. in the wheel of education, okay. but our public education system here in Wicomico County, which I think is very good, I believe is a key driver for the economy of this region. Poor public education systems dictate poor economic sure, conditions. Yeah. So I think we're in a real catbird seat here in this region that their emphasis from the elected leaders is to provide the funds for a quality, first-rate public education. So I'm passionate about education. Sounds like it. Um, let's switch gears. Um, let's go to a very important topic. Pets, hobbies, interests outside of work, if there is an outside of work for you. <laughs> um, I love family. Family time to me is, and I never appreciated it when I was younger. Right. Now that I'm older, I really appreciate I can, I can the time. Yeah. Um, but I love golf. I golf, I still ski. Uh, both my wife and I ski. She's a golfer too. I uh, love fishing. So we have a little our little creek where we are mm -hmm. here in uh, Wacomico County. We're fishing, crabbing. I love travel. I'm a rabid Washington Capitals fan, um, uh, Nationals fan. Sorry, I'm not an Orioles fan, mm -hmm. Nats fan. I'm an old Senators fan when the Senators okay. were there. Yeah. I remember seeing Mickey Mantle. I was six years old, went to opening day with my dad at the old uh, D.C. Stadium, which was RFK Stadium. So Mickey Mantle had a towering home run in the uh, third inning in left field, and that's stuck in my head. Oh, yeah. So I've been a baseball fan ever since. But that's yeah, cool. all sports. I love all sports and outdoor stuff. So, all right, turn a little bit more towards chamber stuff. Right. Uh, what do you look forward to the most about working at the Salisbury Area Chamber? What I look forward to the most is working with the business community. Um, something I got a great deal of pleasure and pride in Calvert County was helping businesses, making connections mm -hmm. between businesses, uh, advocating for our businesses, mm -hmm. large and small, on regulatory issues, legal issues, federal issues, involving our local legislators and our national leaders that are representing us sure. here on the shore and helping to solve problems and to eliminate barriers to business. So I look forward to that advocation, educating. Uh, our chamber here in Salisbury is gonna offer a lot more educational programs and forums for mm -hmm. members. Okay. Uh, everything from social security seminars and forums, business development seminars and forums. We wanna load up the education piece and give that back to our members as a reason that we value their membership. We wanna to continue to retain them as members. All right, we got about a minute left. So can you give us your best pitch as to why the person sitting at home that owns a business should be a member of the Chamber of Commerce in Salisbury. Uh, we'll help your business with connecting you. We'll help your business advocating for you. Uh, I tell every prospective member, we don't want your dues unless there's something the Chamber can do for you. And I don't mean you have to attend events and, mm -hmm. and, and network. Right. Tell us what you need. Tell us if you need advocacy, connections with other businesses. We'll make connections with multiple businesses to help you out. Mm -hmm. Contacts yeah. that you may need. Sure. Um, so I, we want to be one-stop shopping for the business community, members or non-members, doesn't matter, uh, in our area to help you grow your business. If you've got a restaurant, you want to increase your catering, let's sit down and talk about a strategy that the chamber can employ to help you increase your catering sales. If you're in retail, if you're in manufacturing, let's sit down and look at where your gaps are. And let's see what we can do to plug in our resources and our strengths to help you fill those gaps. Very good. Sounds like a plan. Congratulations again. Thank look you. forward to working with you in the future as well. Thanks, Tony. We'd like to give you another opportunity now to take a look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce.
Welcome back to Chamber Chat right here on Pat 14. And joining us now is Emily Rance, PR and Marketing Director mm -hmm. for Women Supporting Women. Yes. Thanks for joining us on Chamber Chat. Thanks for having me. Okay, so as I just talked with uh, Jeff Merritt a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. uh, I said to him, for the six people that didn't know about Operation We Care, mm -hmm. tell us what that is. I think I'd use the same six people because they obviously are living in a cave, but give us an idea <laughs> of, of what Women Supporting Women is. So we are a local breast cancer nonprofit organization. Um, for 23 years, we have helped local men and women, mm -hmm. you know, men get breast cancer too, mm -hmm. um, with free services and support um, when they're diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, it's Everything we do is free. Um, we are a hands-on organization. We do not have any national ties or national funding, which is very important to mention. Mm -hmm. Um, we are completely grassroots local, so every dollar we raise stays right here. On yeah, I was going to make sure that was brought up because yes. a lot of people think you're connected. To ACS uh, yeah. and Komen. Yes, correct. All the time, yeah. and we are not. Yeah. <laughs> all, all money stays here. It helps Absolutely. local people doing local things. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those things that you do to help people that are well, going through cancer treatments? One thing I like to mention is um, we really reach out to the, to the patient when they're first diagnosed mm -hmm. with breast cancer. Um, before we even meet you, we're reaching out to you. So we have these pink bags, we call them our newly diagnosed bags, um, are given out to all of the local surgeons. Um, so when you're diagnosed, you're handed this pink bag and okay. it is full of really important information mm -hmm. about breast cancer, some fun stuff too, like some like crossword puzzles and stuff. Right. Um, but one of the main things in there is the uh, breast cancer handbook which is a really important resource um, for when you're first diagnosed. And there's also a caregiver's handbook in there for whoever is helping you through your journey. Yeah. Um, so from then you can decide, well, I don't want to be contacted by them, or I do. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you don't, that's fine. Take the bag and you know, go on your journey, but we are definitely here for you. Um, from then we have mentoring services from Sue Revel. She is our co-founder and she's amazing. Um, she really helps women on their journey, and men on their journey. Mm -hmm. um, but we have free wigs, hats, scarves, um, bras and prosthesis for mm -hmm. after a mastectomy. My favorite service that we have is um, our loaner lift chair program. So we have um, power lift chairs that we loan out um, after a woman has a double mastectomy. Mm -hmm. Um, to help them uh, through their recovery. Yeah, I've seen those chairs. Yeah. yeah, they're expensive. They are expensive. So it's a really nice thing, you know, for us to have. I think we have seven now that we loan out um, for as long as you need for your recovery. So being a locally funded, not connected to a big organization that, that supplies you with all everything that you need, how are you funded? Um, donations, grants. We, um, we have had some really great grants in the past, um, and we still get them for our programs. We're trying to um, increase our programs this year th through grants. Mm -hmm. um, so donations, fundraisers, we have um, a few fundraisers throughout the year. Um, that really helps us stay funded and keep going. Cool. Um, you have an event, I think, that is coming up. Um, tell us what that is. Browse for a Cause. Yes. So um, it's one of our most fun fundraisers, uh -huh. um, but it's a really great way to raise awareness for breast cancer. Um, you obviously think of bras when you think of breast cancer. Right. Um, so what we do is we have um, businesses or groups or individuals uh, decorate bras in the theme. This year the theme is nursery rhymes. So you decorate your bra and they are hung at the center at Salisbury mm -hmm. for the entire month of May. So it's a really great, I always like to tell people, it's a great way to advertise for your business if you're doing it with, through a business um, because people can vote on your bra. So mm -hmm. it's one, um, $1 per vote um, and they can vote online or they can vote at the mall. Um, but it's a great way to raise awareness. It's really fun and it's amazing what people come up with. I, uh, I have uh, one of the bras we have submitted mm -hmm. in my office <laughs> on top of a, a cabinet. You're very proud of it. And, well, I, I put it there just to freak people out yeah. because they walk into our office and they come in and they look at my office and they never say anything, but they're, they're, they're looking. And about the third time they look at it, I'll say, do you want me to tell you what it is? And Are you so, wondering? Yes. So uh, it, it well, gets me. Well, thank you for participating. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, advertising 
24-7. Absolutely. Um, that is amazing. All year round. We always say local supporting local. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> How can people sign up to participate in that? Because everybody needs to decorate a bra. Absolutely. Um, you can contact our office. Um, you can call at 410-548-7880. Um, you can go online. Uh, we have a Facebook event invitation right now, and it has all the information on there. Um, and you can stop by and sign up. What other events do you have throughout the year that people could maybe plug into? I know I um, got dunked a couple of times here not long ago. <laughs> well, you mentioned Operation We Care. We're uh -huh. very close with Jeff. We have a great relationship with him. Um, he helps us with our motorcycle ride every year. Uh, he, we, we talked a little bit off camera about yeah, that this morning. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, that's in July. That's grown every year since I've worked here. It's grown mm -hmm. bigger and bigger. And this year we're going to have some really great surprises and really growing it this year, thanks to Jeff. Uh, so that's in July. And then our biggest event is our Walk for Awareness, where you were dunked. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's in October, and that's at Winter Place Park. So that's definitely our biggest, most attended event that we have. You know, I was most afraid when not to get dunked, but leading up to it, if it was going to be cold I that know. morning. I know. <laughs> and for those of you that are going to be dunked in the future, it wasn't cold. So it wasn't. You, you were, you're going to be safe. I was worried about that as well. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you're a good sport. Yeah. I raised the most money, too, I, yes, I heard. you did. You yeah. did. We always like to have our local celebrities. I think it was the bow tie. <laughs> that uh, yeah, that, 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 that always better. does it. Um, so um, visit the website. Mm -hmm. um, not any charge to enter your bra nope. into the contest. Completely free. That's why I say it's great advertising for your business because it's, um, you know, as far as the materials that you're paying for, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a great way to get your business out there. And, you know, like I said, if if you can't put a bra in, that's fine. Just vote. Yeah. Vote for your favorite bra. Very cool. Or more than one. We will have ours there. Good. It will be the winner. Of course. Because everyone's going to vote for it. <laughs> That's right. Emily, thanks for joining us on Chamber thanks Chat. Thanks for having me. We'd like to also thank you for joining us on this edition of Chamber Chat. And as always, if you missed a portion of this edition or you'd like to view previous editions, you can visit, visit Pat Fourteen's website and utilize their on-demand function or visit the Chamber's website. That's all the time we have for this edition of Chamber Chat. My name's Tony Nichols, your host, encouraging you to make a difference. <laughs>